Well, hello again. I'm going to continue the subject on steps for guaranteeing success. And I tell you what, uh, the purpose of the Word of God, remember we talked about the purpose of the Word of God is for two things. Number one is to form beliefs. And number two is to strengthen beliefs. To form beliefs and to strengthen and establish beliefs. So I want to encourage you to go back to uh, the first part of this message last Wednesday night. And uh, we got into that uh, first part. And uh, so I, I'm going to continue on uh, the step. Because uh, there's four steps I'll be talking about. You believe, receive, confess, and rest. You believe, receive, confess, and rest. Now, so this uh, message, uh, I want you to go with me to uh, Mark eleven twenty three and verse 24, a very uh, well familiar scripture that we need to, uh, to go over this again, revisit this, and it'll bless you. Mark eleven twenty three, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Here it is. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Then it goes into verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. So believing is mentioned in both scriptures, verse 23 and verse 24. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. And be, not, and be cast into the sea. He shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. Believe in the thing that he says. When you believe the word of God, you speak the word of God, you believe what you say, because it's backed up by the word of God. And then verse 24, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Believing is so very important. Hebrews 11.1, 1, the Amplified Bible says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed, of the things we hoped for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of the reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. For by faith, trust, and holy fervor, born of faith, the men of old had divine testimony, born to them and obtained a good report. Hope. What, it, what does it mean to hope? It means to desire with expectation of attainment. It means to expect with confidence. To trust, it means a desire accompanied by expectation or a belief and fulfillment. Abraham was our example of faith. In Romans 4, 18, it talks about, and 4, 17, it talks about Abraham considered not his own body, now dead, neither the dead is of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God. See, when you believe, you will not stagger. You'll not waver if you really believe. You know, Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Now this is taken out of the Living Bible. When Jesus came to Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who are the people saying, I am? Now that's very important to understand why he said that. Remember the scripture, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you don't know who he is, how can you have faith in him? Who are the people saying I am? 
Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, some Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, of the prophets. Then he asked them a specific question to them. Who do you think I am? Simon Peter answered, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Now notice what he says here. God has blessed you, Simon, son of Jonah. Jesus said, for my Father in heaven has personally revealed this, so you, so uh, you, this is not, uh, this is not from any human source. So he said, God, the Father revealed this to you. This is not from any human source. See, only God can get you to believe. I can't get you to believe. I can only preach you the gospel. I can only share the good news with you. But you have a choice. You can believe it or reject it. You know, God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. But they also perish because they reject knowledge. Psalms 33 and verse 4. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. John 8, 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you know it, then you believe it. Now what is truth? Truth is the word. What is the Word? The Word is Jesus, manifest in the flesh. Who is Jesus? Jesus is God. Who is God? Jesus in the flesh. And God is love. So truth is love. So we could say it this way. You shall know love. And love will make you free. You shall know love, because love will make you free. Matter of fact, faith worketh by love. Now, love is the key to understanding God. God is love. God is called the Word of God. So what is truth? The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When you know God, when, you really, when we really know God, we know love. And when we know love and act and walk in, walk in love, things will happen. Our faith will climb exceedingly because love is the answer. What the world needs now is not just people of the word, the world needs people of love because God is love and love is God. And that's why Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Now notice 1 John chapter 5 and, and verse 9. And this is also the living Bible. All who believe, talk about believe. All who believe this know in their hearts that it is true. If anyone doesn't believe this, he is actually calling God a liar because he doesn't believe what God has said about his son. And what is it that God has said that he has given he has given us eternal life and that this life is in His Son. So whoever has God's Son has life. Whoever does not have His Son does not have life. I have written this to you who believe in the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. So we need to believe what the gospel says. You know, before you read the scripture, you say, you know, Lord, help me. Help me of my unbelief. Help me to believe. 
And the Spirit of God will open the eyes of your understanding like he did Thomas. And Thomas said, Lord, I believe. After he felt and touched, Lord, I believe. And Jesus said, hey, Thomas, you, you felt my hands and my side and you believe. Because you felt and you saw. But blessed are they that have not seen, but yet they believe. So believing is the big, very beginning when you start. You know, uh, Mark 5, 36, Jesus says, Be not afraid, but believing. See, believing will get rid of fear. If you really believe that God's with you, you won't be afraid. Notice there in Luke chapter 8, verse 4. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and, and, and choked it. Others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And listen, and he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that sin they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word, word out of the hearts, lest they should believe and, and be saved or rescued. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in times of temptation fall away. Why? Because they stop believing. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and, and bring no fruit to perfection. But listen to this, but that on the good ground are they which in honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So this, these portions of scriptures about the seed kind of reminds me of Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, when he talked about the wise man and the foolish man. The wise man built his house on the hearing and the doing of the Word of God. The reason why he did the Word, he heard it, he believed it, and he did it. And I believe he rested when the storms came. His house did not fall because his beliefs were not only formed, but it was established and strengthened in the Word of God. The Bible says, A wise man lay up knowledge. But a foolish man's words are headed for destruction. So make sure we believe and say the right things. Don't talk about what you think. Talk about what you know. Talk about what you believe. Amen. As the Bible says, I believe and therefore speak. Speak the word of God. Believe it. Hebrews eleven six, as it says, as we read before, but without faith. It is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe. It's a requirement. It's essential. It's an imperative that we believe. Believe what? Believe that he is. Is what? Well, I, I can go many areas. I believe that he's the healer. I believe that he is my provider. 
I believe that he's my educator, my trainer, my sustainer. I believe that he is my peace, my baptizer. Whatever you believe, you can achieve and then receive. So it's imperative that he is a rewarder of them that did diligently seek him. Believe that he is. Believe that he, believe that he is a rewarder. So those things that we're talking about is so important. But we must believe. Now we, we talked about what it means to believe. Those steps that I'm talking about, step number one is to believe. And we've talked about for the past two services about believing. Now let me go right in uh, to the next step. Let's talk about receiving. Now to receive a reward, you must be on the receiving end. Now sometimes people, they, they don't mind giving, but you need to learn how to receive. See, you've got to be, don't be full of, hum, don't be full of pride, but be, be humble. You've got to be willing to give, you've got to be willing to, to receive, because that goes, that goes hand in hand. Now when you plant your seed, believe God that you will receive the increase or the harvest. I remember several years ago, in my early years of ministry of pastoring, and, and uh, my first church I pastored was in 1979 in, in Hartsville, South Carolina. And uh, there's a, an elderly lady that lived about 15 miles uh, from the church. And, and um, of course, she never uh, attended that church, but she wanted, uh, she didn't go to church because of her condition. But she wanted to hear uh, messages. So back in those days, that that's during the cassette days. Every every Monday, every Monday, I would uh, drive 15 miles. She lived 15 miles from there. I would I'd drive 15 miles to her home and uh, d get to meet with her and, and and give a cassette of the services. And and she's she had to have the, she had to have those services because she loved the word. And every Monday I would deliver those uh, cassettes to her. And I, I knew that this, uh, this lady wasn't really a wealthy lady. And, and I knew that she couldn't afford very much. But I, she was on probably just Social Security and, and, and all the debt she has. But I, I knew that she was being blessed by the Word. And one, and one Monday I, I drove out there and, and uh, knocked the door and went in and Gave her the cassette of the, this past Sunday morning's message. And, and before I left, uh, she, she, she grabbed my hand and, and, and uh, put $15 in there. And, and I just immediately said, I said, ma'am, I said, I'm not coming out here for any rewards. I'm not coming for this to receive anything. I just want to bless you. And, and, and she said, Sonny, she said, don't, don't, don't deny me a blessing. Don't deny me a blessing because I want to bless you. I want you to receive this. I said, yes, ma'am, I'll receive it. And God taught me right then, always be willing to receive. Always be willing to receive. Even though when you don't think you don't want it, but yet people that wants to be blessed. Now, my, my dad, he's in heaven now. And uh, he was just, it was hard for him to receive anything. And, uh, but you got to learn to receive. If, if we walk up and bless you, just receive it. If someone takes you out for a meal, receive it. Be thankful and pray with them that they'll receive a harvest of their giving. See, there's giving and receiving. There's believing and there's also receiving. We must believe that God is a rewarder. You don't ever go to God and say, God, I don't want to bother you. You never bother God. God doesn't care how many times you ask Him about things. 
Now, once you learn how to believe God by faith and believe that you receive, then he expects you to bring the word up before him and thank him for the word of God that he sent to you to, re- to, to receive. I, I've learned that day that I've learned how to receive it. And sometimes it, it is tough to receive when, when you know someone's going through a tough time. And I, it was hard to receive, but the Lord taught me that don't stop, my, don't stop me from blessing her because she wanted to plant seed. And uh, so she said, I, I'm not giving this to the church. I'm giving this to you. This is your personal. So I received it. So you learn how to receive. Now, there, there's several things about receiving. And, and maybe why some don't receive. Just some things maybe you hadn't thought about, about receiving. The Bible talks about receive one another. It says there in Romans 15, 7, Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also receive us to the glory of God. In other words, receive one another, love one another. Another one, it says, uh, another one is receive commandments. There in Proverbs 10, 8, the wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. Or a wise man lay up knowledge. It says here, a wise in heart will receive commandments. So receive one another, receive commandments. Here's another one. Receive correction. That's not easy sometimes. Receive correction. Jeremiah 5, 3. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken, uh, stricken them, but they have, not gri- they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their face, faces harder than a rock. They are refused. They have refused to return. So there's different kinds of receiving. Receive one another. Amen. Receive commandments. Receive correction. The Bible says, uh, receive the engrafted word. That's hooked up with the commandments. Receive the engrafted word there in James 1.21. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. The Bible also talks about not only receiving the commandments in grafted words, it talks about receiving my sayings. Proverbs 4.10, uh, 4, Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Praise God. That means you can live a long life if we receive his sayings. He said, with long life will I satisfy. So I'm going to live a long time. Why? Because I know I am. Because the Bible says so. He said, with long life will I satisfy. I'm not satisfied yet. So I'm going to live longer. How about you? Amen. So receive the engrafted word. Receive commandments. Receive the sayings. Hey, here's one. Receive instructions. Receive instruction, Proverbs 4.13. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. See, when it talks about receiving, it's not only talking about receiving a financial harvest. It's talking about receiving the saying, the engrafted word, the commandments, the instructions. And then, of course, the next one is, is the most important there, uh, which is still connected, is uh, Matthew 13, 23. But he that received seed, receive the seed. When you hear the word of God and you heard the word of God example, you heard for the first time, that it was God's will to heal you. And, and, and when you heard that, it went off like a light bulb. It just came on and said, yeah, I believe that. 
I receive that seed. Now I know it's God's will to heal me. And therefore, that, that seed is formed. That belief is formed there now. Now that seed, now it's formed. Now we, you, you go and hear that again, uh, over and over, as the Bible said that it, that it might be by the washing of the water by the word. You water that seed, water that seed, revisit that seed, get that seed full so you can be established in that. And when the bad report comes, when a, a, something comes and attacks your body, you not only you believe that, you are convinced, you are fully persuaded what the Bible says. See, you receive that seed concerning healing, or you receive that seed concerning financial prosperity, or you receive that seed concerning peace. No matter what comes, when the enemy comes, he walks about seeking whom he may devour. He can only devour those that don't know. There's people that don't believe much of anything, and therefore they're the ones that's being destroyed for lack of, lack of knowledge. So receive the engrafted word. Receive the commandments. Receive his sayings. Receive his instructions. And all of that is connected to receive the word. Matthew 13, 23 again. But he that receives seed into good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also bear fruit, bringeth forth some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. So the value that you place on the one ministering is the same value that will be placed on what is being said. Amen. Now, when, when Brother Hagen, of course, there's different good speakers in, but when you go to a, a camp meeting or go to a special service and, and, and there's a, a man you, you, you love to hear, you got to be there. And, of course, the one I was raised up under was Brother Hagen and uh, had a camp meeting every year. And, and that was a center. They had different speakers, but and they're all good. But I value all of them, but I, I want the one that really God spoke to me the most through was, is, is Brother Hagen. And you value him. The value that you place on the speaker is the same value that will be placed on what is being said. Therefore, cause the word to be received or rejected by the listener. So when you hear a speaker, uh, a message, you value him. You value that you can trust him. You know that he hears from God. You know that he's speaking the truth. And when you value the man, you're going to value the word of God. See, when you, when you follow Jesus, value the Word of God. Value the Word of God. Receive it. And so we'll be talking some more about receiving in my next lesson. So before I close, let me say that we, we got number one, the steps of, uh, of believing. And we talked about the step. We'll get into some more the next lesson on receiving. And thank you again. I always say this every week, but thank you again for your financial support. And thank you for using the easy time. And, and again, continue to pray for this ministry. And not only for this ministry, pray for other ministries. Pray for other churches right now that the glorious gospel will be preached everywhere and signs and wonders will follow the word. I want to, I want, I want, now you can quote this after me. You should know it by now. You can say this with me. I am the head, not the tail. I am above and not beneath and cannot be defeated. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Whom he leads, he feeds. Whom he guides, he provides. He's given his angel charge over me to keep me in all my ways. So therefore, I want to remind you that we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for taking time to hear this message. We love you. If you need us, give us a call. Uh, you can text me uh, at my, on my phone number. Most of you know my number. Uh, my email is all lowercase, Pastor Moss at BellSouth.net. Pastor Moss at BellSouth.net. If you are enjoying these uh, messages, you know, text me, let me know, or email me. And if you're looking for a home church, let me tell you what Living Church, uh, Living Word Church doors are wide open, ready for you to come back home. And many of you are home, and many others are coming in. We love you. God bless you. Have a blessed evening. Thank you. Thank you for watching Living Word Church online and being part of our eFam. If you joined us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. And if you joined us on Facebook, please like the page, 
so you don't miss any future events or services. There are a couple ways you can support this awesome ministry. One, by sharing this video with friends and family and getting the word out. Two, by making a financial donation by clicking the Give Now button. This will help us to continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. Thank you again for watching. God bless.